Near the dawn of the second millennium, in the 12th century, in the south of Italy, the great apocalyptic thinker Joachim of Fjord spoke of a new age of the spirit which was to come and might be present during his time or be being uh, ushered in during his time. And in the wake of Joachim come two figures, one living in the south of what is today Spain and the other living in the north. The first is the great Sufi master Ibn Arabi and the second is the great propagator of the um, the Zohar and the Kabbalistic tradition in northern Spain, Moses of Leon. An interesting coincidence is that the year of Ibn Arabi's death, 1240, and the year of Moses of Leon's birth coincide. These figures represent a mystical current within, respectively, Islam, Ibn Arabi, and Judaism, Moses of Leon. But in studying their writings, I've noticed a remarkable coincidence, a remarkable point of convergence, and I wanted to share that with you and relate it to a broader body of thought, that is the um, astrological uh, speculation, um, uh, it, that, that is the body of, of uh, astrological speculation concerning the, uh, the seven uh, heavens and the seven planets and their relation to our lives on earth. The broad thought is this, and I must emphasize, of course, that the philosophical system of Ibn Arabi and the philosophical system of the Kabbalah, as um, Moses of Leon uh, sort of uh, presents it in the Zohar, um, which it itself is said to go back many centuries before, um, are, are distinct um, and they are both worth um, exploring and studying on their own terms. But what I intend to share in this video is the points of convergence, um, which I think are deep between these two views. And the first point is simply to say that God is infinite. Ibn Arabi and the Kabbalah agree on this point. Ein Sof is the infinite Godhead um, from which all things flow, the infinite point that cannot be named or grasped or boxed or limited in any way whatsoever. This infinite principle of God is um, there in Ibn Arabi too. Um, both systems view God as infinite. An idea that is picked up on in the Christian mystical tradition. Also, of course, in particular, one might think of Nicholas of Cusa. And from this basic um, perception, if we can call it that, of the infinite deity beyond all name, beyond all word, beyond all comprehension, there comes, shall I say, a duality, a from the infinite one, a 
sort of dyadic principle. And this itself goes back to Pythagorean notions. For example, the Pythagorean holy number of the decad or the tetractus, which is comprised of a point, two points, three points, four. And so in a sense, we are um, following the road of the Pythagoreans with this thought process to say that there is a one infinite point and then come two. The Zohar is um, the, the, the is a, um, a central um, Kabbalistic text, and is a very cryptic one indeed. And one of the things that it says in the Zohar is it quotes Genesis, and it says, "Male and female, he created them." From here we learn. Any image that does not embrace male and female is not a high and true image. Also, a human being is only called Adam when male and female are as one. Male, female, that's a duality. And it is only when this duality is one, says the Zohar, that a human being can be properly so-called. One considers here, too, that another um, point of convergence between these views is that we have an infinite Godhead and we have the human being made in God's image. The human being as reflecting God in some manner, maybe an imperfect manner, maybe a more or less perfect manner, but in some manner imprinted upon the soul of the human being or Adam, is the divine. Both the Kabbalistic and the Sufi traditions agree on this. An infinite God, in some sense wholly transcendent, of all finite um, grasping, perception, comprehension, words, and the human being, the human soul, as a microcosm, and in some way um, bringing together various dualities. I have mentioned male and female from the Zohar. And this leads me on to the broad theme of my video, which I would like to, which um, seems to be a vital undercurrent in both of these systems. On the astrological scheme, male and female are associated with Aries and Aphrodite. These are the Greek names for deities, gods, divinities, powers. Aries and Aphrodite, or as we may know them, Mars and Venus. Indeed, you may have seen the way that man and woman, male and female, are symbolised. And the, the that way, in, I can't uh, show you the, uh, the symbols here, but the, but the symbols used to denote male and female are derived from astrological schemes associated with Mars and Venus. And indeed, there was a popular book written, uh, I don't know when, to be honest, um, called 
um, men are from Mars and women are from Venus. Okay, so this, so the the broad point is that we've got this cryptic saying from from the Zohar that the the higher noble image um, of the human being must include male and female, and that that you can only actually call a human being a human being if you embrace both male and female and what i'm going to suggest is that what that means is that if um I'll put this book down for a moment what that means is that um if mars and venus if these polarities if these principles come into um proper union let's say it that way and that proper union in the kabbalah is also called beauty and this is another of the sephirot let me stick with the kabbalah for a second then because what we have is a scheme of the Kabbalah is comprised of ten sephirot, and I. The purpose of this video is not to expound upon these ten sephirot, and they are something that I'm continuing to to try to understand. And so, um, I don't know if I I could do that honestly. Um, but we've already mentioned two of them, which are din, or judgment which is associated with, which I am associating with. And intuitively, I think that there is a link between this Kabbalistic insight and the astrological scheme. It really wouldn't surprise me because astrological knowledge was so um, such an important current of the medieval outlook in general. Um, so it really wouldn't surprise me if there's a relationship here. And intuitively, I feel like there is one. Anyway, so Mars, Mars or Aries, Mars or Aries. And I'm going to associate that with Din or Gevura, um, which is also the left hand of God in the Kabbalah. Oh, <laughs> um. That's quite useful. I'm holding my left hand up. So my the left hand, Mars, Aries, Din, Judgment, Rigor, and Redness, or Power as well. And then uh, we have the right arm, Love, Hesed, Greatness, Grace, White. And... Um, so those are the two principles. Let me just recap that. So we have these two principles, these two hands, the left hand, the right hand. And in the Kabbalah, um, these are the left and the right hand of God. And re recall, we are made in the image of God. And so in some sense, um, we image this at a at a microcosmic level at the level of our own being we um sort of repeat this process um so we have mars we have venus let me read now a passage from the introduction to the zohar which i have here and this will be helpful, hopefully, to illuminate these principles of male, female, Mars, Venus. And their, remember, their beautiful union. And the name for the beautiful union, by the way, is Tiferet, if I've got that correctly, which means beauty. It also means heaven, sun, harmony, uh, the king. Uh, the blessed holy one and this as i understand it is like the center of the entire tree of life on the kabbalistic view 
And this center is like a child born of these two principles or the proper union, the proper relation between Hesed and Din, love, judgment, Venus, Mars. So let me talk a little bit about this. So the Sephirot Bina gives birth first to Hesed, love, and Din, judgment. So the right hand, Hesed, love, and the left hand, Din, judgment. This pair of Sephirot is also called greatness, uh, Gedula, greatness, and Ge Gevura, power. They are the right and left arms of God, two sides of divine personality, free-flowing love and strict judgment, grace and limitation. Both are necessary for the world to function. Ideally, a balance is achieved and symbolised by the central sephira, the central sephira, Tiferet, or beauty, also known as Rahamin, Rahamim, compassion. Sorry, I don't speak Hebrew. Um, I'm tripping up on these words a little bit. Um, oh yes, and it, and this is an account for the origin of evil too. Interestingly. But um, I think that's a little bit of a digression from the purposes of this video, but it is an interesting one. The idea is that you have Din, you have Hesed, you have this strict judgment, and you have this soft mercy. These two are supposed to complement and complement each other and harmonize into beauty, which is the sort of central uh, harmonic balance of the cosmos. And if they do not, if this strict judgment of Din overwhelms Hesed and there is not enough Hesed, then that is the birth of evil on this Kabbalistic view, which is almost like the anti-beauty, the anti-Tiferet. That's the thought anyway. So let me reflect a little bit on what has been said. So yeah. They are the these are the right and left arms of God, two sides of the divine personality, free flowing love and strict judgment, grace and limitation. Now recall the thought is that there is an infinite Godhead, and that this Godhead um births gives birth to um, sort of these dyadic principles, these dual principles, from these come the arms of God, let's say it that's, that way. And these arms of God are like cosmic balancing principles. Um, indeed, the idea of the cosmos itself means a kind of ordered, something that is ordered, um, something that is har harmonized and balanced. We have strict judgment on the one hand. We have soft love, mercy, grace on the other. Judgment, mercy. And um, we saw that if these are not properly balanced, if and, and we saw that in the Zohar it's saying that the human being is only properly so called when the male and the female are balanced. Now, this is part of my intuition, part, yeah, it's basically I'm being led by intuition here, that I'm associating the strict judgment side with the left hand and with Mars and with the, the male, and I'm associating the... Um, grace and mercy of hesed or love with the female uh, of the right hand 
And so I'm associating that cryptic line in the Zohar with these two sephirot. One could also say lots of different things about this, because, of course, there are many different kinds of dualities that seem to permeate the cosmos. Um, light and dark, heavy and heavy and light, um, etc. And um, yeah, I, d I don't know how much I'll go into that because I think Ibn Arabi touches on that. And so I'm going to get to that in a moment. Um, so that's the thought is that, 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 oh, and this balancing, this, this tiff, this, um, this tiferet, yeah, this tiferet, I think that's the sun in the astrological sense. And said, indeed, it says in, in my, um, m my copy of the Zohar here, that tiferet is associated with the sun. And indeed, the sun on the astrological scheme is is indeed flanked you see by mars and venus like these uh bodies these heavens do indeed flank the sun which is a uh well the most brilliant of the heavens in that sense like the most bright the most luminous and so there's an association there between these three planets in astrology, the Sun and um, and Mars and Venus. So these Sephirot seem connected to those uh, those planets too. Um, and the point is that it's it's about cosmic balance. And that's, again, the word that it's used, balance, harmony. And, um, oh, it's it's also interesting, too, just like as a bit of a side tangent, but like related is that there's, there's a Greek myth. There's a Greek myth about Ares and Aphrodite. They have um, a sort of tryst when uh, Aphrodite is married to Hephaestus. And um, they are lovers, Ares and Aphrodite in the Greek myths. And um, they uh, give birth to Eros, Antiros, um, the principles of love, and uh, also Phobos, the god of fear, and also Harmonia. So... There is like a interesting precedent here because it, because there's also like a thing about the relationship to God here because God on the one hand on this Aries this Mar Marsh Martian Aries hand is a god of judgment and punishment and that hand should be feared in that sense, in the sense of the religious posture towards the divine. And in and um, on the other hand, this is the hand of grace, love, mercy, and that should inspire desire, love, eros, etc. So the idea that like eros and phobos, um, basically like desire, love and fear, are born of Aries and Aphrodite is an interesting one to consider in this context. Um, it's also interesting to note that the scholar um, Rudolf Rudolf Otto is it? I think it's Rudolf Otto at the at the beginning of the twentieth century characterized the numinous the notion of the numinous which carl jung would would pick up on in his psychology of religion uh or like the category of the numinous or the holy yeah oh, there's specifically the word he uses is the holy i'm pretty sure uh rudolf otto 
wrote a book called the idea of the holy i think so it's a it's from that book and it's and it's about this idea of what is holy and how does otto characterize it it's um the there he uses two latin terms which i don't think i can render here but basically it's like the fascinating mystery and the tremendous mystery so fear and trembling and great or wonder at this at the holy those two aspects those dual aspects are characterized in otto's conception of the holy it arouses wonder or great and also fear and trembling at the same time this connects to so many things but the broad idea i want to sketch is that this idea of the human being as somehow an in-between thing um caught between heaven and earth in that way as a mediator the human being as a mediator so in in some sense the human being is so lowly so finite so small so little that fear of god's judgment is one posture the human being might take in relationship to the infinite creator of all things a, a, an emphasis on the littleness of the human being and on the other hand, there is a great uh, unlimitedness to the human soul and an unlimitedness to desire and an opening up to the divine uh, glory and the divine grace. So there's this great opening openness of the spirit and also a closeness of the spirit, a great bigness of the spirit and a smallness captured in these two hands of God. And this theme really interests me in general because I think we can see it everywhere we look if we think about this idea of judgment, limit, din, limitation, um, sort of judging, uh, limiting, and grace, expanding beyond those limits into love into mercy um i think there's as we move through life i think a balancing of these hands does in fact um um we are called to sort of balance uh these th these forces these principles throughout our life let me turn now to Ibn Arabi, who it seems to me has a very similar um, scheme. And um, let me read a little bit from Ibn Arabi. Now, as I said earlier, the Kabbalah and the Sufi metaphysics of Ibn Arabi are not identical, but I'm focusing on the points of convergence. Um, so, no, this is quoting Ibn Arabi. Know also that the reality has described himself as being outer and inner, manifest and unmanifest. He brought the cosmos into being as constituting an unseen realm and a sensory realm so that we might perceive the inner through our unseen and the outer through our sensory aspect. So just there he said a lot. And again, we're talking about um, dualities, the infinite, which cannot be comprehended or got at, and these basic, this basic dyadic uh, nature of the cosmos into dualities we've talked about in the Zohar, male and female, Mars and Venus, and their joyful union in the sun or in beauty. And um, here Ibn Arabi is talking about the inner 
and the outer aspects of our humanity. And again, we've got another sort of dyadic aspect here. We've got the inner soul, the, the inner, the soul and the outer of the senses. And Ibn Arabi saying that we were created in this way, this is part of our image. Uh, that's part of what this image of God means. And crucially, this is the thing that sort of sparked in me that there's just like a very deep convergence between these views is that um, Ibn Arabi continues, he has also attributed to of himself pleasure and wrath. Having created the cosmos as expressing both fear and hope, fear of his wrath and hope for his pleasure. Where have we heard that before? And he has also described himself as being possessed of beauty and majesty, having created us as combining awe of his majesty and intimacy, and um, so on with all his, ad his attributes and names. He has expressed this polarity of qual qualities in the Quran as being his hands devoted to the creation of the perfect man who integrates in himself all cosmic realities and their individual manifestations. So as far as I'm concerned, that is the same idea which we find in Ibn Arabi, who's writing in southern Spain in the... Um, 12th and early 13th century and in the Zohar which emerges in northern Spain and Moses of Leon is born the same year that Ibn Arabi dies which in 1240 which is just a really interesting and remarkable coincidence so I mean it just I mean I don't know a lot about this period of of thought and of time um, and I imagine we don't have a tremendous deal of sources from that time. But there seems to be something in the air <laughs> that a common source, a common intellectual heritage, a common sort of current and spiritual vision that Ibn Arabi and Moses of Leon seem to be drawing on. And I'm going to suggest that astrology plays a part in this especially because of this relationship between venus aphrodite uh female mars uh aries mars male judgment mercy and the sun in the middle as the beauty of those principles and re re recall in the Kabbalah it suggested that when the beauty of those principles is not manifest when they're in discord when there is strife between them let's say it this way that is the origin of evil and Ibn Arabi talks about the the, the hands his hands again um the same idea in the Zohar about the two arms of God, uh, Din and Hesed. And indeed, Ibn Arabi is also talking about pleasure and wrath. So again, a similar conception of our relation to divinity. And um, I suppose I can leave it there. Um, this video was intended as a sketch of an idea or a sketch of a thought which I've had and that I thought was worth sharing with you. It's not as developed as it might be or as um, refined as it might be, but it seems like there's something there. Um, and it very much fascinates me because there seems to be deep wisdom in this too. Um I think human life is is a mixture of 
um, f fear, anxiety, uncertainty, and hope, hope for pleasure and higher desires. And this is our part of our imaginal mixture as, as human beings. And maybe if the fear, anxiety part gets the upper hand without um, enough of the hesed of the pleasure and the hope uh, being prominent, maybe that's depression, maybe that's chronic anxiety, maybe that's a plethora of um, um, mental health pathologies as we speak about today. Maybe that's what that means for that to get the upper hand. And then what if Hesed got the other upper hand? What if there was too much pleasure, too much softness? Or maybe that's like what hedonistic outlook is, you know, what maybe that's like um, throwing caution to the wind and disregarding all laws, principles, morality, ethic and, and these kind of things. And maybe some din, maybe some judgment upon that um, mere sense, sensory pleasure seeking is needed to correct the balance of that hedonism. And so um, it very much seems to me like um, there's a very deep wisdom contained in um, Islamic and Jewish mysticism of the Islamic and Jewish mysticism of medieval Spain. And um, as I say, these two figures, Ibn Arabi and Moses of Leon, are not quite contemporaries, but um, one is one dies and one is born in the same year. And in terms of the mystical insights into the nature of the divinity and the nature of the human being, I think there is a very strong convergence. And my intention today was to share that thought with you. And... Um, hopefully that's um, prompted some um, reflection. Um, so thank you for listening. I appreciate you taking the time to listen. If you enjoyed the video, um, please give it a like. And if you would like to stay around for some more content, um, please subscribe to the channel. And I would really love to hear your thoughts on this uh these these ideas that i've presented here today so thank you for listening once again